This week in Jamaica Now, why the PNP president was a no-show at the party headquarters after the local government election loss. Magisterial recount filed in three electoral divisions. JDF battalion to be deployed to western Jamaica. Remembering the former Cuban leader Fidel Castro. And the latest in the tension between the police and Indica. I'm Damian Mitchell and this is Jamaica Now. The president of the People's National Party, Portia Simpson Miller, this week faced more criticism for failing to show up at the party headquarters after being beaten in Monday's local government elections. The PNP managed to retain control of five local authorities, while the JLP won nine with a tie in St. Thomas. At the PNP's Old Hope Road headquarters on Monday, PNP General Secretary Paul Burke, his impending successor Julian Robinson and the Vice President Angela Brown Burke sought to console dejected comrades. But Simpson Miller was not there. Mr. Burke said he advised her to stay home and rest as she was exhausted ahead of her trip to Cuba the next day. <laughs> Meanwhile, JLP leader Prime Minister Andrew Holness said his party deserves the victory. This victory can almost be seen as a referendum on our performance for the last nine months. And Jamaica is saying, you have performed. And the Electoral Office of Jamaica, the EOJ, has been summoned to three magisterial recounts following the official count of ballots cast in Monday's election. The recounts have been filed for the Ginger Ridge Division in St. Catherine, won by 16 votes by the PNP, the Salt Spring Division in St. James, also won by the PNP, as well as the Lindui Division in St. Thomas, which was declared for the party by eight votes. <laughs> Jamaica has joined the rest of the region in paying tribute to the former Cuban leader, Fidel Castro. The former president died last Friday at the age of 90. On Friday, flags at government ministries and agencies were flown at half-mast. Earlier, both Prime Minister Andrew Holness and the opposition leader Portia Simpson-Miller released statements hailing the former Cuban leader. The new army chief, Major General Rocky Meade, has announced plans to deploy a full battalion of soldiers to western Jamaica. He made the announcement on Thursday afternoon after his installation at the King's House. For a long time, we had to split a battalion to do several duties, and so we're a bit underserved. So we're embarking on a recruiting uh, campaign now. Police statistics have shown that since the start of the year, just under 400 people have been killed across Trelawney, St. James, Hanover, and Westmoreland. St. James alone recorded 232 of the murders. The police commissioner, Dr. Carl Williams, says there is no information yet whether the fugitive being sought by American law enforcement, Marlon Jones, is in Jamaica. Jones, who goes by several aliases, is believed to be a Jamaican. He has been listed as one of the 10 most wanted fugitives by the FBI, which is offering a reward of 100,000 U.S. dollars or nearly 13 million Jamaican dollars for information leading to his capture. The FBI says Jones is wanted in connection with the early morning killing of four people, including Jamaican gang leader Robert Rodigan Davis, in Los Angeles on October 15 this year. We assisted the people in the United States with what we had and um, we pledged to continue our cooperation and investigation. Um, they haven't come back to us since this latest development. Um, if there is a need to come back to us, they know that we are always open. And Commissioner Williams says the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the Independent Commission of Investigations are close to resolving their differences. On Thursday, the National Security Minister Robert Montague summoned the police commissioner and the Indicom boss Terence Williams to a meeting amid public concern about the fractious relationship between the police and the oversight body. This really was not a big deal, really. It was just to further look at areas in which there have been, you know, um, areas of concern between Indicom and the JSF. We want to ensure that um, the processes that Indicom engage when they deal with police officers are much more um, you know, transparent. I'm not saying that they're not transparent now, but that there's a whole lot more that can be done. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at onlinefeedback at leanerjm.com. You may tune in to Power 106 FM for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Damian Mitchell, and as we go, remembering the former Cuban leader, Fidel Castro, dead at 90. Mm -hmm.